With that being said, we're going to move over here to our Kraken, uh, who continue as they ramp up towards the All-Star break. Uh, they played four games over the past week, uh, January 18th, pardon me, 16th versus the Tampa Bay Lightning on MLK Junior Day, uh, a 1 o'clock start on a Monday. Uh, Seattle would lose that game 4-1, to one. two of those goals from Tampa Bay coming with the net empty. Our player of the game was Vince Dunn with one goal, one point, three shots, uh, three hits, and one takeaway. On the 17th, the very next day, the team traveled out to Edmonton. Excuse me. To play the Oilers, losing that game five to two. Seattle stayed in it early on, but ultimately the Oilers uh, proved to be too much. Our game uh, player of the game once again was Vince Dunn with one goal, three shots, uh, one goal, one point, three shots, two blocks, one takeaway, uh, extending his point streak to eight games. Um, so Seattle got a day off in between those that back to back. And they will. They played on January nineteenth versus the New Jersey Devils, winning four to three in overtime. So that one was a uh, pretty fun to see. see. Seattle should have won that before overtime, but nonetheless, they were able to take care of business in the overtime period. Our player of the game was forward Ryan Donato. Donato two goals, one assist for a three point night, uh, hitting seven total shots. I believe that was Donato's first career three point night as well. Um, and then January twenty first to wrap up. That week of games there on Saturday versus the Colorado Avalanche, losing that one two to one in an overtime shootout. Unfortunately, player of the game was goaltender Philip Grubauer, 26 saves, a four for four save percentage on the power play, and a total save percentage on the game of 963. Um, for our players of the week, I went with Vince Dunn here, uh, two goals, one assist, three points, 11 shots, 10 hits, and nine. Uh, wait a minute, 10 hits. I apologize. I don't know what that's about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I went with Dunn, all things considered. Uh, you know, he had a solid performance. Three points overall isn't exactly the greatest, um, but he had his point streak, which uh, nine games, which was really great to see. Uh, he had a point in overtime against the Devils there to extend the nine games. So an all-time high streak for Dunn and the highest point streak by a defenseman in Kraken history, which was great to see. Um, and it's just his, his play overall has been really great for the Kraken, uh, who you know have been looking for that defensive consistency. You look at the games against Colorado, only allowing two goals, one of those coming in the shootout. You look at the game against Tampa Bay before they added those two empty net goals. His Dunn's play has been great, and he's in line for a pretty sizable extension, hopefully from Seattle. Some have said that he might price himself out of playing for Seattle. Um, but I certainly would like to keep him locked up uh, for years to come. Bell went with Andre Burakovsky here. We'll go over to that selection here with this great photo by Matthew Bermudez. Uh, Burakovsky, one goal, one assist, six shots, and three blocks over the past week. Uh, his OT winner to send the uh, his OT winner against the Devils here, as you can see him celebrating in the photo, uh, sent the Kraken into first place in the Pacific Division uh, after that win against New Jersey. I can get why Bell went with that. Just the magnitude of that goal and that win for Seattle, obviously, you know, to put them at first place in the division for the first time in their existence was big. Um, it was really interesting. The story about Burkowski uh, that day, because in the morning skate for the Kraken, he was hunched over. He just generally looked upset. He didn't seem like himself. Um, and he had the, he had to miss the next few games here, unfortunately. Uh, but that goal was really big for them to obviously go into the first place in the Pacific Division. Um, win that game, his offensive play for Seattle continues to be big. Um, and I'm hoping that he's back from injury sooner rather than later. So that's where we went with players of the week. Unfortunately, we do have injury news. The last few weeks have been fortunate to not deal with any injuries. Uh, Justin Schultz and James Schwartz have both missed time this past week. Uh, Schultz missed the past two games for the Kraken, a veteran defenseman, someone that's very key for them on specialty teams. He's been out with an undisclosed injury, so we haven't been able to get any updates on that. We should hear tomorrow uh, after the Kraken practice. So again, I implore you to follow us on social media so we can get you those updates in real time. Schwartz has missed the past four games after reportedly slashing his hand in a game, and we haven't gotten an official update. It's still considered an undisclosed injury unfortunately um but a lot of speculation has been around that hand being slashed 
um, and hoping that's, again, we, we need both of those guys for the push. Schwartz's impact has been huge. His offensive production has been a massive for the crack in the season, even last season before he got injured at, towards the end of the year. So hoping that we get some good news on that front. But generally, we haven't gotten any official word from the Kraken in those games since. Andre Burkowski missed the game on Saturday versus Colorado. He was president, uh, president pardon me, uh, at yesterday's skills showcase. Uh, but his injury is undisclosed as well. So we're hoping to get more news um, on that front. Um, but we had a recent piece of team news that might play into that yesterday uh, for John Hayden, who was actually called up uh, as an injury replacement player. I uh, called up from the Coachella Valley by Firebirds, was sent down to Coachella Valley. So there might be some positive news on that front that we might get one of our forwards back Um before Wednesday's game against Vancouver. Uh, some other team news. The team is reportedly interested um, and has been persistent in their pursuit of Canucks forward Bo Horvat. Horvat's current stats are 46 games played, 30 goals, 19 assists, 49 total points, 5.7 point shares, and four game-winning goals for the Canucks. There's been a lot of controversy around Vancouver uh, that we'll get to in league news, actually. Um but Horvat's a veteran center, made the All-Star game in 2013, 2017, and is going to make this year's All-Star game as a player, a fan vote in, pardon me. Um, it's very interesting to look at that, though, that the only reason I really mention this is because Horvat and the Kraken have been linked for the past few weeks was a report that Seattle's been persistent. I, uh, I got a report today that Seattle's reportedly uh, drawn their name out of consideration for Horvat, considering what they're asking. Um, so I, I don't know if we'll, we'll see that trade come to fruition. Uh, Seattle has been interested also in Panthers forward, Sam Reinhart. So that's something to keep in, in touch as well. Um, but it's very notable that Seattle and general manager, Ron Francis have been active in adding a veteran impact player prior to this year's deadline, uh, especially with all their success. So that's something to keep an eye on. Obviously, again, follow us on social media below to get that news in real time. Um, but still, something to keep an eye on. Maybe we're talking about that sooner rather than later uh, with the tread deadline rapidly approaching. To finish up our Kraken segment here, we do have some league news, some very uh, one, one story a little bit odd and the other pretty sad. On the 16th, Robin Leonard filed for bankruptcy. The injured Golden Knights goaltender and his wife have reportedly racked up millions of dollars in debt including missed payments for a snake collection, an exotic snake collection. Prior to filing for bankruptcy, the Knights goalie faced a $4 million lawsuit. So Leonard, uh, who's still injured for Las Vegas, is dealing with some issues there. On the 22nd, Bruce Boudreau was fired uh, by the Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver finally made a coaching change after months of general speculation that Boudreau would be fired, ousting Bruce Boudreau in favor of Rick Tochette. Um this drew a lot of criticism. Uh, Boudreau is pretty generally uh, well-respected around the NHL and was a very big fan favorite, and Vancouver finally let him loose. There's a lot of distrust by the fans and the players with the Vancouver ownership, so things are not too well in Vancouver, but the Kraken still have yet to beat Vancouver. Is this week the, the time it finally happens? We might not know. We'll look ahead here to our uh, upcoming week for our Kraken games. Uh, they start Wednesday, um, January 25th versus the Canucks at 7 p.m. as Seattle sits with a 27 win, 14 loss, five overtime loss record for good, good for second in the Pacific division, but things are heating up at the top of the division. Um, their next game remains in the division, January 27th versus the Flames at 7 p.m. These are all home games uh, to finish out the year and finish out uh, before the All-Star break. January 28th, so a doubleheader for the Kraken there. Uh, January 28th versus the Columbus Blue Jackets is also a 7 o'clock game. Uh, very important that Seattle gets points against these divisional teams, and especially a team like Columbus coming to town. Columbus is actually uh, winning the Bedard race. If you don't know what that means, Connor Bedard is uh, a player that teams are tanking for. So it's in that thing when there was uh, the Colts suck for luck, for Andrew Luck, all that sort of stuff. So. Very key that Seattle picks up some more points, uh, especially with how tight the top of the division has been getting. Seattle sitting at 59 points. Las Vegas has 60. The Kings have 58. And Edmonton is fast on everyone else's tail as well. I believe they're at 57. So you can see how important getting those points going forward is uh, for our Kraken. 